Hey guys, we're going to do a gear review video and we're going to be looking at the Zev Technologies OZ9C combat pistol. Uh, so before you, you know, fool around with handguns or any firearm, really, you want to make sure that you know the condition of the gun. This one loaded. We got a magazine in there and I know there's one in the chamber because that's how we carry it. So we're going to unload it, remove the source of the ammunition. And then we're going to lock it to the rear, and we're going to check the chamber, right? Visually and physically inspect the chamber, make sure it's empty. And then we'll look inside there, and that's just a good way to make sure your weapon is clear and safe, all right? So, there we go. All right, we'll get these things out of the way. So, we're looking at the pistol is the Zev. OZ9C, written right there. And it's the combat pistol compact slide with the X grip, and we'll talk about what all that means in just a minute. Uh, full disclosure, Zev sent, of the gun, sent us the gun, uh, but they didn't stipulate uh, any conditions on how, why, or what we said about it. And unless you've uh, been living under a rock, you've heard of Zev, uh, Zev Technologies. Just a little bit of background on the company. They started out in Oxnard, California. That's near the Navy Marine Corps base at Port Wanimi, California. That's the same town, really, of Oxnard. And, uh, and so Zeb was up, started there, and they started making aftermarket upgrade parts for Glocks, like triggers and spring kits and other things. And this thing, though, is not an upgraded Glock. But we'll get to that. So then they moved to Washington State a few years later, and they start designing their own weapons. And that's what kind of gets cool about uh, Zev. They, um, they do everything from concept, like, you know, from concept to completed product. Everything in between is all done in-house. They make their own uh, parts. They make everything, and they design everything uh, themselves. And this gun, the OZ-9, OZ for original Zev, uh, OZ-9C combat pistol is an example of that. They made this thing from the ground up as a new gun. So, but Zev's customer base started to expand from competitive shooters then you had some elite military teams that started looking at it and using their guns, and some certain law enforcement folks started doing the same thing. This particular gun, the OZ-9C, has been adopted by the uh, Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration teams that are responsible for the secure transport of nuclear material in the U.S. All right, so these guys, uh, kind of the, the um, special operations team that moves nuclear material around the country. That was their choice of firearm as well. And there are some other teams uh, that do work uh, for our government overseas that use this gun. So all that means uh, to me, to you, is that you're getting, you basically you're getting a gun with a Glock 19 length slide. And in this particular gun, you've got a Glock 17 size grip, right? So it's a 19 Glock 19, just for reference purposes, everybody knows what a Glock 19 slide length looks and feels like. And this is a 17 length grip. The result is a well-balanced pistol with a grip that fits man-sized hands. You know, the first thing you notice about this gun is going to be the grip. And when you picked up your first Glock and you put it in your hands and you aimed at something with it, you could see the top of the slide because the, the angle of the slide in your hand, based on how you used to shoot with other pistols, this, uh, the Glock would be a little higher because the, the angle was different. That was because Gaston Glock set the grip on a Glock to be 22 degrees, 22 degrees in relationship to the slide. And that was different from like the pistol I started off on training wise was the Browning High Power. And then we migrated to the SIG 226 and then they migrated us to the Glock 19. Just about every other gun, a Glock had a different grip angle. The grip angle on the OZ-9C is set at 18 degrees. It's 18 degree grip angle, so it's not as severe as, as a Glock. That angle is the same angle that John Browning designed the 1911 to have. It's an 18 degree grip angle, and there's science behind both of those angle choices. And it's only a four degree difference. The hardest part about trying to conceal a handgun is the grip, all right? If you've got the gun in a, a Depenix carry holster, right? And this is your body. This is your, your abdomen. That's the world. 
what's going to stick out about this thing is going to be this, right? This end here is going to either swing out a little bit or it's going to roll out a little bit. You know, this is the thing that prints is this, not this. This is buried down in your pants below the belt line. Um, not this generally. I mean, you might have a little bit of that, but it's generally going to be this. This gun solves that problem. You can swap out the frame, the frame, this part, with another frame that's a little smaller. And you can swap it out by just taking off one pin, right? So let's take the gun, let's take the gun down. And you pop that pin out. When that pin pops out, what happens is you've got a chassis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but this chassis just levers itself out. And then you take this grip or this lower, this frame, and this thing only costs $69, this little piece of polymer, 69 bucks. Only moving part in it is the mag release here. That's it. There's no trigger mechanism in here. All the trigger mechanism is right there. And you've got a basically a Glock 19 size grip. You can check the length difference out there. Which allows you to hide the gun a whole lot better because this isn't sticking out. The further this goes, the more there is to print. And the rest of the problems you can deal with with you know, a good holster, uh, like this one. This is the Filster. It's got, you, can, you know, you get a claw in there to help pull the grip back into the body. You have a bulge or a wedge down in the bottom that helps to rotate the gun back into the body. And so that kind of mitigates this, bringing it in and bringing it back. It kind of keeps it from having that problem. Um, so each one of these frames comes with its own pin, right? This one has a pin, this one has a pin, and you just slide that pin in through that hole once you stick it back in there. And that is how you swap those pieces out. The way that you would put this gun together, so we've got a little notch, if you can see it or not back in here, but this little uh, cavity back here accepts the back end here. That little ledge fits right in there. And then the rest of the gun, or the part, the chassis, just pops down in there. And then you put your pin in that spot there. So we'll put the chassis back together. And now you've got a chassis. This is the only serialized part, is this chassis system. Put this back together. So I'm going to talk about the trigger for just a minute. The trigger on this one is a flat face trigger. It ships from the factory with about four and a half pounds of pull on it. The brake on this thing is smooth and clean, all right? And the reset is minimal in terms of travel distance. And it's a nice, nice audible reset. And then the wall is right there. It's, there's no, there's hardly any, any take up, any slack at all. You're done so and it's not spongy either like a glock it's got a really good reset on it for me that's perfect for carry for duty use so let's talk about the chassis for a second all right let's take this slide off one more time pull it to the rear drop it down forward pull trigger slide sucker off now we'll pull this thing apart one more time pop the pin out that comes out okay so this chassis this is the heart of the gun all right, this is a, it's made out of 4140 uh, stainless steel, and it's got um, lube reservoirs, oddly enough, on it and milled into it. And these act as a place for debris to fall also. These uh, lube reservoirs help keep the gun running in all conditions, kind of like the AK-47 of pistols. But the tolerances are tight, right? You saw it was tight getting it in, just, I mean, metal to al uh, to um modular was tight the the rails and the slide the milling here the way this fits together is i mean there's there's no slop going on here there's no play at all it's just i mean it, it's just done really really well 
And But this is the only serialized part that you get on this gun. The serial number is right here. I mean, we've obviously covered ours up, but regular guns, this is your, your uh, serialized piece because it has the trigger mechanism and firing components here. The other thing about this uh, rail is notice that it runs the length of the pistol and gives you 50% more engagement on the factory than on factory rails on other guns. You can swap the slide out, you can swap the frame out. That's the heart of the gun right there. Uh, other companies have since, since come up with um, their own take on this. You know, it's, uh, SIG's got their own Striker 5 modular where this pops out, but this one was kind of the one that started the, started the trend on it and set the tone for it. So putting it back together once again, we're just going to slide that, hook that in there, lever that down, seat it fully, put your pin, come back with a punch of some sort, and drive that pin down, and then check, make sure your spring is pushed up in there. Guide rod, line your rails up, and functions check, boom, all right, and ready to go. All right. I've put probably 10,000 rounds through this thing since we've had it. Zero problems. Zero. The gun just works. And it's been through some hard use. Every day it's been carried in, if it's uh, concealed, it's been carried in this holster here. If it is being used on the range. We've been kind of testing out what you saw earlier, which was this little gadget. And... We had a holster specifically made for it by really a cool company out of Canada. We'll be doing a review on this later. Uh, Gray Fox, uh, they're a high-speed group out there, make some good stuff for some really neat uh, products and nice small tight package. So we'll be doing a review on that too. The, uh, the only aftermarket stuff that we've added to this is the Trigicon RMR HD and the the, uh, the gun itself comes milled out for an RMR footprint, so we slapped one in there. I mean, if you want to put an EOTech on it, you can get a plate that will allow you to put the loophole footprint, not Leopold, loophole, which is required, I believe, for the, the, e, the EOTech um, pistol sight. The only other thing we've done is we've added this uh, self-adhesive bandage. It helps uh, with the grip in, uh, in wet, sweat, or any other sort of fluid that might be on the you know, on the gun. That's the only aftermarket part we've added. Oh, um, Magwell, but that's a Zev Magwell. Uninformed look at this thing and they say, that's just another tricked out Glock. But you know, that's why they call those folks uninformed because it's just not a tricked out Glock. It's a lot more gun than that. It's uh, a proven gun. Pro shooters, professional shooters, top tier military and government teams are using it. I'll give you the specs on it. Nine millimeter. It's uh, got a 4.48 inch barrel. Overall length is 8.04 inches. It's 28 ounces empty, and that's excluding the optic on top. Just 28 ounces, just a gun. Um, it's got a fiber optic front sight. Um, if you don't have an optic on there, and if you do intend to use night sights, I would recommend maybe that you have this one a different color than this one. Um, just makes for speed of acquisition of target and sights together. I get back to the specs. That, so that's the sights on it. Uh, obviously a polymer uh, grip. And the action is a striker fired gun. The finish on it is matte black. And the grip comes in gray, it comes in tan, or it comes in uh, black. Uh, the capacity, magazine capacity, when it comes from, because it's coming out of Washington State, It'll come with a 10 round uh, Magpul magazine, but you know, it'll hold a Glock 17 uh, magazine, so 17 plus one. Put a base plate on it, you obviously get more bang for your buck there. MSRP on these uh, pistols, it isn't cheap, but you're getting what you pay for. And with this thing, you're going to get a reliable pistol that has um, seen use around the world, continues to, and it functions really well. So MSRP on this thing is going to be uh, let's say, well worth it, in my opinion. So that's the Zev OZ-9 combat pistol, OZ-9C.